the deeds of the holy apostle thomas from the apocryphal acts of paul peter john andrew and thomas by bernard pick this librivox recording is in the public domain the deeds of the holy apostle thomas first deed of the apostle judas thomas how the lord sold him to the merchant aban that he should go down and convert india one at that time we the apostles were all in jerusalem simon called peter and andrew his brother james the son of zebedee and john his brother philip and bartholomew thomas and matthew the tax-gatherer james son of alphaeus and simon the Cananean, and judas the son of james and we portioned out the regions of the world in order that each one of us might go into the region that fell to him and to the nation to which the lord had sent him by lot then india fell to judas thomas also called didymus and he did not wish to go saying that he was not able to go on account of the weakness of his body and said how can i being a hebrew go among the indians to proclaim the truth and while he was thus reasoning and speaking the saviour appeared to him during the night and said to him fear not thomas go away to india and preach the word there for my grace is with thee but he obeyed not saying wherever thou wishest to send me send me but elsewhere for to india i am not going two and as he was thus speaking and considering it happened that a merchant who had come from india named aban was there sent from the king of gundafor and having received an order from him to buy a carpenter and bring him to him and the lord having seen him walking about in the market at noon said to him dost thou wish to buy a carpenter he replied yes and the lord said to him i have a slave a carpenter and i wish to sell him and having said this he showed him thomas at a distance agreed with him for three pounds of uncoined silver and wrote a bill of sale saying i jesus son of the carpenter joseph declare that i have sold my slave judas by name to thee aban a merchant of gundafor king of the indians and the purchase being completed the saviour took judas also called thomas and led him to aban the merchant when aban saw him he said to him is this my master the apostle answered and said yes he is my lord and he said i have bought thee from him and the apostle held his peace three on the following morning the apostle prayed and entreated the lord saying i go wherever thou wishest o lord jesus thy will be done and he went to the merchant aban carrying nothing at all with him but only his price for the lord had given it to him saying let thy worth also be with thee along with my grace wherever thou mayest go and the apostle came up with aban who was carrying his effects into the boat he began therefore also to carry them along with him and when they had gone on board and sat down aban questioned the apostle saying what kind of work dost thou know and he said in wood ploughs and yokes and balances and boats and boats oars and masts and small blocks in stone slabs and temples and royal palaces and aban the merchant said to him 
it is well for such a workman we also need they began therefore to sail away and they had a fair wind and they sailed cheerfully till they came to andropolis a royal city chapter four and having left the boat they went into the city and behold the voices of flute-players and of water-organs and trumpets sounding round them and the apostle inquired saying what festival is this in this city and the inhabitants there answered the gods have brought thee also that thou mayest be feasted in this city for the king has an only daughter and now he is going to give her to a husband in marriage this festival then which thou seest to-day is the rejoicing and public assembly for the marriage and the king has sent forth heralds to proclaim everywhere that all are to come to the marriage rich and poor bond and free strangers and citizens but if any one should refuse and not come to the marriage he is answerable to the king and aban having heard said to the apostle let us also go that we give no offence to the king and especially as we are strangers and he said let us go and having turned into the inn and rested a little they went to the marriage and the apostle seeing them all reclining reclined also in their midst and they all looked at him as a stranger and coming from a foreign land and aban the merchant as being a lord reclined in another place chapter five and whilst they were eating and drinking the apostle tasted nothing those about him said to him why hast thou come hither neither eating nor drinking and he answered and said to them for something greater than food or even drink have i come hither that i might accomplish the will of the king for the heralds proclaim the wishes of the king and whoever will not hear the heralds will be liable to the judgment of the king when therefore they had dined and drunk and crowns and perfumes had been brought each took perfume and one anointed his face another his chin and one one part of his body and another another and the apostle anointed the crown of his head and put a little of the ointment in his nostrils and dropped it also in his ears and applied it also to his teeth and carefully anointed the parts round about his heart but the crown that was brought to him wreathed of myrtle and other flowers he put on his head and took a branch of reed in his hand and held it and the flute girl holding the flutes in her hand went round them all and when she came to the place where the apostle was she stood over him playing the flute over his head a long time and that flute girl was hebrew by race chapter six and as the apostle looked to the ground one of the cup-bearers stretched forth his hand and struck him and the apostle having raised his eyes looked at him who had struck him saying my god will forgive thee for this wrong in the world to come but in this world he will show his wonders and i shall soon see that hand that struck me dragged along by dogs and having thus spoken he began to sing and to repeat this song the maiden is the daughter of the light on whom rests the majestic splendor of kings delightsome is her sight resplendent with brilliant beauty her garments are like spring flowers sending forth sweet fragrance on the crown of her head the king is seated feeding with his ambrosia those who live under him 
truth rests upon her head joy she shows forth with her feet her mouth is opened and becomingly she sings all hymns with it thirty-two are they who praise her her tongue is like a door curtain drawn back for them who goes in her neck ascends like steps made by the first creator her two hands point predicting at the chorus of the blessed ages her fingers are the gates of the city her chamber is bright breathing forth scent from balsam and every perfume sending forth sweet odor of myrrh and savory herbs within are strewn myrtle branches and all manner of sweet-smelling flowers the ingress is adorned with calamus chapter seven she is surrounded by her groomsmen seven in number chosen by herself her bridesmaids are seven who dance before her twelve are they in number who minister before her and are at her bidding their gaze is attentively directed at the bridegroom that they be enlightened by his sight and be for ever with him for that everlasting joy and sit down in that wedding to which the great ones assemble and abide in the supper of which the eternals are deemed worthy and put on royal garments and be dressed in shining robes that both may rejoice and exult and praise the father of the universe whose majestic light they have received and have been enlightened by the sight of their lord whose ambrosial food they received of which there is no failing and drink also of his wine which brings to them no thirst nor desire praised and glorified with the living spirit the father of truth and the mother of wisdom chapter eight and when he had sung and finished this song all who were present looked at him he kept silence they also saw his form changed but they understood not his words as he was a hebrew and his words were spoken in hebrew only the flute girl understood it being of the hebrew race and hearing him she played the flute to the others but repeatedly looking at him for she loved him as one belonging to her nation and he was also beautiful in appearance above all who were there and when the flute girl had finished her flute playing she sat down opposite him and looked and gazed at him but he looked at no one at all neither did he regard any one but only kept his eyes on the ground waiting until he could depart thence and the cup-bearer that struck him came down to the fountain to drink water and there happened to be a lion there which killed him and left him lying in the place after tearing up his limbs and dogs immediately seized his limbs among which also one black dog laying hold of his right hand in his mouth brought it to the place of the banquet chapter nine when they saw it they were frightened and all inquired who it were which had left them and when it became known that it was the hand of the cup-bearer that struck the apostle the flute girl broke her flutes and threw them away and went and sat at the feet of the apostle saying this man is either god or god's apostle for i heard him say in hebrew to the cup-bearer i shall soon see the hand that struck me dragged about by dogs which also you have now seen for as he said so also it has come to pass some believed her and some not and when the king heard of it he came and said to the apostle rise up 
and go with me and pray for my daughter for she is my only child and to-day i give her away and the apostle would not go with him for the lord had not yet been revealed to him there but the king took him away against his will to the bridal chamber that he might pray for them chapter ten and the apostle stood and began to pray and speak thus my lord and my god who accompanies thy servants guide and leader of those who believe on thee refuge and repose of the afflicted hope of the poor and deliverer of the captives physician of the souls that are lying under disease and saviour of every creature who gives life to the world and invigorates the souls thou knowest the future who also accomplishes it through us thou lord who revealest hidden mysteries and declarest secret words thou lord art the planter of the good tree and by thy hand all good works are produced thou lord art in all and comest through all and exists in all thy works and makest thyself manifest through the working of all jesus christ the son of compassion and perfect saviour christ son of the living god the undaunted power which has overthrown the enemy the voice heard by the rulers which shook all their powers messenger sent from on high who wentest down even to hades who also having opened the doors didst bring out thence those that had been shut in for many ages in the treasuries of darkness and didst show them the way up that leads up on high i beseech thee lord jesus offering thee supplication for these young persons that thou mayest do unto them what helps benefits them and is good for them and having laid his hands on them and said the lord be with you he left them in the place and went away chapter eleven and the king requested the groomsmen to leave the bridal chamber when all had left and the doors were shut the bridegroom raised the curtain of the bridal chamber that he might bring the bride to himself and he saw the lord jesus talking with the bride and having the appearance of judas thomas the apostle who shortly before had blessed them and gone out from them and he says to him didst thou not go out before them all and how is it that thou art here now and the lord said to him i am not judas surnamed thomas i am his brother and the lord sat down on the bed and ordered them to sit down on couches and he began to say to them chapter twelve remember my children what my brother said to you and to whom he commended you and know that if you refrain from this filthy intercourse you become temples holy and pure being released from afflictions and troubles known and unknown and you will not be involved in the cares of life and of children whose end is destruction but if you get many children for their sakes you become grasping and avaricious plundering orphans deceiving widows and by doing this you subject yourselves to most grievous punishments for most children become unprofitable being harassed by demons some openly and others secretly for they become either lunatics or half withered or frail or deaf or dumb or paralytics or idiots 
and though they be healthy, they will be again good for nothing, doing unprofitable and abominable works. For they will be detected either in adultery, or in murder, or in theft, or in unchastity, and by all these you will be afflicted. But if you obey and preserve your souls pure to God, there will be born to you living children, untouched by these hurtful things, and you will be without care, spending an untroubled life, free from grief and care, looking forward to receive that incorruptible and true marriage, and you will enter as groomsmen into that bridal chamber, full of immortality and light. Chapter 13 And when the young people heard this, they believed the Lord, and gave themselves over to him, and refrained from filthy lust, and remained thus, spending the night in the place. And the Lord went away from them, after having said to them, The grace of the Lord be with you. And the dawn having come up, the king arrived, and having supplied the table, brought it in before the bridegroom and the bride. And he found them sitting opposite each other, and he found the face of the bride uncovered, and the bridegroom was quite cheerful. And the mother came in and said to the bride, Wherefore dost thou sit thus, child, and art not ashamed? but actest as if thou hadst for a long time lived with thine own husband. And her father said, It is because of thy great love to thy husband that thou art uncovered? Chapter 14 And the bride answered and said, Truly, father, I am in great love, and I pray to my Lord to continue to me, the love which I have experienced this night, and that I obtain that man whom I have experienced to-day. That I do not cover myself is, because the mirror of shame has been taken away from me. I am no longer ashamed nor abashed, since the work of shame and bashfulness has been removed far from me and that I am not frightened is, because fright did not abide in me, and that I am cheerful and glad is, because the day of joy has not been disturbed, and that I have lightly esteemed this husband, and these nuptials that have passed away from before mine eyes, is, because I have joined in a different marriage and that I had no conjugal intercourse with a temporary husband, whose end is repentance and bitterness of soul, is because I have been united to the true husband. Chapter 15 And when the bride was saying yet more, the bridegroom answered and said, I thank thee, Lord, who hast been proclaimed by the stranger and found by us, who hast put corruption far from me, and hast sown life in me, who hast delivered me from this disease, hard to heal and hard to treat, and abiding for ever, and established in me sound health, who hast shown thyself to me, and hast revealed to me my condition in which I am, who hast redeemed me from falling and hast led me to something better, and who hast released me from things temporary, and hast deemed me worthy of things immortal and ever existing, who hast brought thyself down even to me and my weakness, to place me beside thy greatness, and to unite with thee, who hast not kept thy compassion from me, who was lost, but hast shown me how to search myself, and to know who I was, and who and how I am now, that I may become again 
what i was whom i did not know but thou hast sought me out of whom i did not know but thou stoodest by me whom i have experienced and am not able to forget whose love is fervent in me and of whom i cannot speak as i ought but what i have to say about him is short and very little and is not in proportion to his glory but he does not find fault with me if i dare to tell him that also that i know not for out of love to him i say even this chapter sixteen and when the king heard these things from the bridegroom and the bride he rent his garments and said to those standing near him go out quickly and search the whole city and seize and bring that man the sorcerer who has come for evil to this city for i led him with my own hands into my house and i told him to pray for my most unfortunate daughter whoever shall find him and bring him to me i give him whatever he shall ask of me they went away therefore and went round seeking him and found him not for he had sailed they also went into the inn where he had stayed and found there the flute girl weeping and in distress because he had not taken her with him and when they told her what had taken place with the young people she rejoiced greatly upon hearing it dismissed her grief and said now i also have found repose here and she arose and went to them and was with them a long time until they had instructed the king also and many also of the brethren met there until the rumor had spread that the apostle had gone to the cities of india and was teaching there and they went away and joined him end of the first deed of the acts of thomas the second deed of the acts of thomas from the apocryphal acts of paul peter john andrew and thomas by bernard pick this librivox recording is in the public domain second deed of the apostle thomas his appearance before king gundafor chapter seventeen when the apostle came into the cities of india with aban the merchant aban went away to salute king gundafor and reported to him about the carpenter whom he had brought with him and the king was glad and ordered him to appear before him having come in the king said to him what trade knowest thou the apostle said to him that of the carpenter and the house builder says the king to him what work in wood knowest thou and what in stone the apostle says in wood ploughs yokes balances pulleys and boats and oars and masts in stone monuments temples and royal palaces and the king said wilt thou build me a palace and he answered yes i shall build it and finish it for because of this i have come to build and to do carpenter's work chapter eighteen and the king having accepted him took him out of the gates of the city and began to talk with him on the way about the building of the palace and how the foundations should be laid till they came to the place where the building was to be carried out and he said here i wish the building to be and the apostle said yes for this place is appropriate for the building for the place was like a wood and much water was there and the king says begin at once and he answered now i cannot commence says the king when wilt thou he said 
i shall begin in november and finish in april and the king was surprised and said each building is built in the summer but canst thou build and finish a palace in the winter and the apostle says thus it must be done and otherwise it is impossible and the king said if thou hast resolved upon this mark out for me how the work is to be done since i shall come here after some time and the apostle took a reed measured the place and marked it out the doors to be set towards the rising of the sun to look to the light the windows toward the west to the winds the bakehouse he made toward the south and the water pipes necessary for the service toward the north when the king saw this he said to the apostle thou art truly a craftsman and it is fitting that thou shouldest serve kings and having left many things for him he went away chapter nineteen and at the appointed time he sent coined silver and the necessaries for his and the workmen's living and he took everything and divided it going about in the cities and surrounding villages distributing to the poor and needy and spending alms and gave them recreation saying the king knows how to obtain royal recompense but the poor must be refreshed as the condition requires it after this the king sent a messenger to the apostle having written the following message let me know what thou hast done or what i should send to thee or what thou needest the apostle sends to him word saying the palace is built and only the roof remains to be done upon hearing this the king sent him again gold and uncoined silver and wrote let the palace if it be done be roofed and the apostle said to the lord i thank thee lord in every respect that thou didst die for a short time that i may live in thee for ever and that thou hast sold me to deliver many through me and he did not cease to teach and refresh the afflicted saying the lord hath dispensed this to you and he gives to each his food for he is the support of the orphans and the provider of the widows the rest and repose to all that are afflicted chapter twenty when the king came to the city he inquired of his friends concerning the palace which judas surnamed thomas had built for him and they said to him he has neither built a palace nor did he do anything of that which he promised to do but he goes about in the cities and villages and if he has anything he gives it to the poor and teaches a new god takes care of the sick drives out demons and performs many miracles and we believe that he is a magician but his acts of compassion and the cures done by him as a free gift still more his single-mindedness and gentleness and fidelity show that he is a just man or an apostle of the new god whom he preaches for he continually fasts and prays and eats only bread with salt and his drink is water and he wears one coat whether in warm weather or in cold and he takes nothing from any one but gives to others what he has upon hearing this the king stroked his face with his hands shaking his head for a long time chapter twenty one and he sent for the merchant who had brought him and for the apostle and said to him hast thou built the palace and he said yes i have built it and the king said when shall we go to inspect it and he repeated and said 
now thou canst not see it but thou shalt see it when thou hast departed this life and the king was very wroth and ordered both the merchant and judas thomas to be bound and cast into prison until he should find out to whom the property of the king had been given and thus destroy him and the merchant and the apostle went to prison rejoicing and said to the merchant fear nothing believe only in the god which is preached by me and thou shalt be freed from this world and obtain life in the world to come and the king considered by what death he should kill them having decided to flog them and burn them with fire on that very night gad the king's brother fell ill and through the grief and imposition which the king suffered he was grievously depressed and having sent for the king he said to him brother king i commend to thee my house and my children for i have been grieved on account of the insult that has befallen thee and lo i am dying and if thou dost not proceed against the life of that magician thou wilt give my soul no rest in hades and the king said to his brother i considered the whole night by what death i should kill him and i have decided to flog him and burn him with fire together with the merchant who brought him hither chapter twenty two while they were talking the soul of gad his brother departed and the king mourned for gad exceedingly because he loved him and ordered him to be prepared for burial in a royal and costly robe while this was going on angels received the soul of gad the king's brother and took it up into heaven showing him the places and mansions there asking him in what place dost thou wish to dwell and when they came near the edifice of the apostle thomas which he had erected for the king gad upon beholding it said to the angels i entreat you my lords let me dwell in one of these subterranean chambers but they said to him in this building thou canst not dwell and he said why not they answered this palace is that which that christian has built for thy brother but he said i entreat you my lords allow me to go to my brother to buy this palace from him for my brother knows not what it is like and he will sell it to me chapter twenty three and the angels let the soul of gad go and as they were putting on him the burial robe his soul came into him and he said to those standing round him call my brother to me that i may beg of him a request straightway they sent the good news to their king saying thy brother has become alive again and the king started up and with a great multitude went to his brother and having come in he went to the bed as if stupefied unable to speak to him and his brother said i know and i am convinced brother that if any one had asked of thee the half of thy kingdom thou wouldest give it for my sake wherefore i entreat thee to grant one favor which i beg of thee to do me that thou sellest to me that which i ask of thee and the king answered and said and what is it that thou wishest me to sell to thee and he said assure me by an oath that thou wilt grant it to me and the king swore to him whatever of my possession thou shalt ask i will give to thee and he says to him sell me the palace which thou hast in heaven and the king said 
a palace in heaven whence comes this to me and he said it is that which that christian built for thee who is now in prison whom the merchant brought having bought him from a certain jesus i mean that hebrew slave whom thou didst wish to punish as having suffered some imposition from him on account of whom i also was grieved and died and now have come alive again chapter twenty four then the king heard and understood his words about the eternal benefits that were conferred upon him and destined for him and said the palace i cannot sell thee but i pray to be permitted to enter into it and to dwell there being deemed worthy to belong to its inhabitants and if thou wilt really buy such a palace behold the man is alive and will build thee a better one than that and having sent immediately he brought out of prison the apostle and the merchant who had been shut up along with him saying i entreat thee as a man entreating the servant of god pray for me and to ask him whose servant thou art to pardon me and to overlook what i have done to thee or intended to do and that i may become worthy to be an inhabitant of that house for which indeed i have done nothing but which thou laboring alone hast built for me with the help of the grace of thy god and that i may also become a servant and serve this god whom thou preachest the brother also fell down before the apostle and said i entreat thee and supplicate before thy god that i may become worthy of his service and become partaker of that which was shown to me by his angels chapter twenty five and the apostle seized with joy said i give thanks to thee lord jesus that thou hast revealed thy truth in these men for thou alone art the god of truth and not another and thou art he who knowest all things that are unknown to many thou o lord art he who in all things showest mercy and compassion to men for men through the error that is in them have overlooked thee but thou hast not overlooked them and now because i entreat thee and supplicate thee accept the king and his brother and unite them into thy fold cleanse them by thy baptism and anoint them with thy oil from the error which encompasses them protect them also from the wolves and bring them into thy meadows give them to drink of thy ambrosial fountain which is never muddy and never faileth for they entreat and supplicate thee and wish to become thy servants and on this account they have also resolved to be persecuted by thine enemies and to endure for thy sake hatred insult and death as thou also hast suffered all this for our sakes in order to gain us who art lord and a truly good shepherd do thou grant unto them that they put their trust alone in thee and obtain the hope coming from thee and hope of their salvation which they expect alone from thee and that they may be confirmed in thy mysteries and receive the perfect benefits of thy graces and gifts and flourish in thy service and bear fruit to perfection in thy father chapter twenty six very friendly disposed now toward the apostle king gundafor and his brother gad followed him never leaving him providing for the poor giving to all and relieving all and they entreated him that they might also receive the seal of the word saying to him since our souls are at ease and as we are earnest about god 
give us the seal for we heard thee say that the lord whom thou preachest knowest his sheep through his seal and the apostle said to them i am glad and entreat you also to receive this seal and to take part with me in this eucharist and blessed meal of the lord and to be made perfect by it for he is the lord and god of all jesus christ whom i preach and he is the father of truth in whom i have taught you to believe and he ordered them to bring oil that through the oil they may receive the seal and they brought oil and lighted many lamps for it was night chapter twenty seven and the apostle arose and sealed them and the lord was revealed to them through a voice saying peace to you brethren and they heard his voice only but his form they saw not for they had not yet received the sealing up of the seal and the apostle took the oil poured it over their head salved and anointed them and began to say come holy name of christ which is above every name come power of the most high and perfect compassion come gift most high come compassionate mother come communion of the male come revealer of secret mysteries come mother of the seven houses that there may be rest for thee in the eighth house come thou presbyter of the five members intelligence thought prudence reflection reasoning communicate with these young persons come spirit of holiness and purify their veins and their hearts and seal them in the name of the father and of the son and of the holy ghost and when they had been sealed there appeared to them a young man holding a burning lamp so that the other lamps were even darkened by the emanation of its light and he went out and disappeared from their sight and the apostle said to the lord thy light is too great for us lord and we cannot bear it for it is too much for our sight and when light came and it was dawn he brake bread and made them partakers of the eucharist of the messiah and they rejoiced and exulted and many others also believed and were added to the believers and came to the refuge of the saviour chapter twenty eight and the apostle ceased not preaching and saying to them men and women boys and girls young men and maidens vigorous and aged both bond and free withhold yourselves from fornication covetousness and gluttony for under these three heads all wickedness comes for fornication maims the mind and darkens the eyes of the soul and becomes a hindrance of the due regulation of the body changing the whole man into feebleness and throwing the whole body into disease greediness puts the soul into fear and shame being inside of the body and robs what belongs to another and suspects that in returning to the owners their property it will be put to shame gluttony throws the soul into cares troubles and griefs fearing that it will be wanting and reaching out for that which is far away in refraining from these things you are without care without grief and without fear and there remains to you that which was said by the saviour take no care for the morrow for the morrow will take care of itself remember also the word mentioned before look upon the ravens and behold the fowls of the heaven 
that they neither sow nor reap nor gather into barns and god takes care of them how much more o ye of little faith but look for his coming have your hopes in him and believe in his name for he is the judge of the living and of the dead and he requits to each one according to his deeds and at his coming and appearance at last no one who is about to be judged by him has a word of excuse as if he had not heard for his heralds preach in the four quarters of the globe repent therefore and believe the preaching and take upon you an easy yoke and a light burden that you may live and not die these things lay hold of these things keep come forth from the darkness that the light may receive you come to him who is truly good that from him you may receive grace and place his sign upon your souls chapter twenty nine and when he had said thus some of the bystanders said to him it is time for the creditor to receive his debt and he said to them the creditor indeed always wishes to receive more but let us give him what is proper and having blessed them he took bread oil herbs and salt blessed it and gave it to them and he continued in his fastings for the lord's day was about to dawn and on the night following while he was asleep the lord came and stood by his head and said thomas rise up early and bless them all and after the prayer and service go along the eastern road two miles and there i will show my glory through thee for because of the work for which thou goest away many will take refuge in me and thou shalt reprove the nature and power of the enemy and he rose up from his sleep and said to the brethren who were with him children and brethren the lord will this day perform something through me let us however pray and entreat him that nothing may be a hindrance to us toward him but as at all times let it now also be done unto us according to his purpose and will and having thus spoken he laid his hands upon them and blessed them and having broken the bread of the eucharist he gave it to them saying may this eucharist be to you for compassion and mercy and not for judgment and retribution and they said amen end of the second deed of the acts of thomas third deed of the acts of thomas from the apocryphal acts of paul peter john andrew and thomas by bernard pick this librivox recording is in the public domain the acts of thomas third deed about the dragon chapter thirty and the apostle went forth to go where the lord had bidden him and when he came near the second milestone he turned a little out of the way and saw the body of a beautiful youth lying and he said lord was it this that thou broughtest me out to come here that i might see this trial thy will therefore be done as thou proposest and he began to pray and to say lord judge of the living and the dead of the living who stand here and of the dead which are lying here and the lord of all and father father not of the souls that are still in bodies but of those which have left them because thou art lord and judge of the souls still in the bodies come in this hour in which i call upon thee and show thy glory upon him that is lying here and he turned to his companions and said 
this work has not happened idly but the enemy has wrought and effected this to make an assault and you see that he has availed himself of no other form and has wrought through no other living being but through his subject chapter thirty one and having said this behold a great dragon came forth from his den knocking his head and brandishing his tail down to the ground and said with a loud voice to the apostle i will say before thee why i have killed him since thou hast come here to reprove my works the apostle said yes say on and the dragon there is a certain woman in this place exceedingly beautiful and as she was once passing by i saw her and fell in love with her followed her and watched her and i found this young man kissing her and he also had intercourse with her and did with her other shameful things but to me it were an easy matter to tell thee this but i dare not for i know that thou art the twin brother of the messiah and always bringest our race to naught not wishing to harass her i did not kill him in that hour but i watched him passing by in the evening struck him and killed him and especially as he had dared to do this on sunday and the apostle inquired of him saying tell me of what seed and of what race art thou chapter thirty two and he said to him i am the offspring of the serpent the hurtful of the hurtful i am a son of him who hurt and struck the four brothers that stood i am son of him who sits on the throne and has power over the creature which is under the heaven that takes his own from those to whom he has lent i am the son of him who encircles the globe i am kinsman to him who is outside of the ocean whose tail lies in his mouth i am he who went into paradise through the hedge and spoke with eve what my father bade me speak to her i am he who inflamed and fired cain to kill his brother and through me thorns and thistles sprang up in the ground i am he who cast down the angels from above and bound them by the desire of women that earth-born children might be produced by them and that i might work my will in them i am he who hardened pharaoh's heart that he killed the children of israel and subjected them through hard servitude i am he who deceived the multitude the people in the desert when they had made the golden calf i am he that fired herod and inflamed caiaphas to the lying accusation before pilate for this became me i am he that inflamed judas and brought him to deliver the messiah to death i am he that inhabits and holds the abyss of tartarus and the son of god has wronged me against my will and selected his own out of me i am a kinsman of him who is to come from the east to whom also power is given to do whatever he will upon earth chapter thirty three when the dragon had spoken these things before the ears of the multitude the apostle lifted up his voice and said stop now o thou most impudent and be ashamed that thou art wholly useless and weak for thine end the destruction has come and do not dare to say that thou hast done through thy dependence but i command thee in the name of that jesus who even until now makes a fight against you for the sake of those who are his own to suck out the poison which thou hast put into this man and to draw it forth and take it out of him 
and the dragon said the time of our destruction has not yet come as thou didst say why dost thou force me to take out what i have put in him and to die before the time for my father shall also find his end when he draws forth and sucks out what he has put into the creation and the apostle said to him show now the nature of thy father and the dragon came put his mouth upon the wound of the young man and sucked the poison out of it and in a short time the color of the young man which was like purple grew white and the dragon swelled and when the dragon had drawn up all the gall into himself the young man sprang up and stood and ran and fell at the apostle's feet and the dragon being swelled up shrieked out and died and his poison and gall were poured forth and in the place where his poison was poured forth there was made a great chasm and the dragon was swallowed up and the apostle said to the king and to his brother take workmen and fill up the place and lay foundations and build houses above it that there be a dwelling place for strangers chapter thirty four and the young man said to the apostle with many tears what have i sinned against thee for thou art a man having two forms and wherever thou wishest thou art found and art not prevented by any one as i see for i saw that man how he stood beside thee and also said to thee i have many wonders to show by thee and i have to accomplish great works through thee by which thou shalt obtain a reward and thou shalt make many to live and they shall be in repose in eternal life as the children of god do thou therefore said he raise this young man whereby he meant me who has been cast down by the enemy and became his overseer at every time thou hast done well to come hither and again thou shalt well go away to him being not at all forsaken by him and i have been released from care and reproach and a light rose upon me and i was released from the care of the night and rested from the daily work but i was also released from him who exasperated me to do these things i sinned against him who taught me the contrary and i have destroyed that kinsman of the night which forces me to sin by his own practices but i found however that kinsman of mine who is like the light i have destroyed him that darkens and obscures his subjects that they know not what they do and ashamed of their works they abandon them and their deeds have an end but i found him whose works are light and whose deeds are truth of which no one repents whoever does them i was released from him in whom falsehood abides whom darkness as a covering goes before and shame impudent in idleness follows after but i found him who revealed to me what is beautiful to lay hold of it the son of truth the kinsman of concord who driving away the mist enlightens his creation heals its wounds and overthrows its enemies but i entreat thee man of god make me again to behold and see him who is now hidden from me that i may hear also his voice whose wonderfulness i cannot express for it is not of the nature of this bodily organ chapter thirty five and the apostle answered and said to him if thou hast released thyself from those things whose nature as thou hast said 
thou hast known and knowest who he is who has wrought these things in thee and hast learned and become a follower of him after whom thou now longest through thy ardent love thou shalt see him and be with him for ever in his repose and in his joy but if thou art rather carelessly disposed toward him and again returnest to thy former deeds and lettest go that beauty and that beaming countenance which has now been displayed in thee and if the splendor of his light after which thou now longest is entirely hidden from thee thou shalt be deprived not only of this life but also of the future and thou shalt go to him of whom thou didst say that thou hadst destroyed him and thou shalt see him no more whom thou hadst said thou hast found chapter thirty six and when the apostle had said this he went to the city holding the young man by the hand and saying what thou hast seen child is only a little of the many things which god has for not concerning these visible things preaches he the gospel to us but he promises to us greater things than these so long as we are in the body we cannot tell and say what he will give to our souls in the future but if we say that he gives us light this is something visible and we have it already but if we say that he will give us riches they exist and appear already in this world and we name them and we long not for them since it has been said with difficulty will a rich man enter into the kingdom of heaven and if we speak of fine cloaks which the weaklings put on in this life we name them and it has been said they that wear soft things are in king's houses and when we speak of costly dinners we mention things that exist and concerning these we have received a commandment to take heed to ourselves lest at any time our hearts be overcharged with surfeiting and drunkenness and cares of this life and it has been said take no thought for your life what ye shall eat or what ye shall drink nor yet for your body what ye shall put on for the life is more than meat and the body than raiment and if we speak of this temporary rest its judgment has also been appointed and we speak about the upper world about god and angels about watchmen and saints about the ambrosial food and the drink of the true wine about lasting and not obsolescent garments about that which eye hath not seen nor ear heard nor hath come into the heart of sinful men what god has prepared for those that love him of these things we speak and concerning these things we preach the gospel do thou also therefore believe in him that thou mayest live and put thy trust in him that thou shalt not die for he is not to be persuaded by gifts that thou shouldest offer them to him nor does he need sacrifices that thou sacrifice to him but look to him and he will not overlook thee turn thou to him and he will not forsake thee for his comeliness and beauty will make thee love him but it permits thee not to turn away from him chapter thirty seven and after the apostle had said this much people were added to the young man and looking about the apostle noticed how they lifted themselves up to see him and they went up into elevated places and the apostle said to them 
ye men who have come to the assembly of the messiah and who wish to believe in jesus learn from this and see that if you do not get high up you cannot see me who am small and cannot look at me who am like yourselves now if you cannot see me who am like yourselves unless you raise yourselves a little from the earth how can you see him who lives above and is now found below unless you first raise yourselves out of your former behavior and unprofitable deeds and desires which last not and of your riches which must be left behind and of the possession which is of the earth and grows old and of garments which spoil and of the beauty which ages and vanishes away yea even of the whole body in which all this is kept and it grows old and becomes dust returning into its own nature for all these things are only a support for the body but rather believe in our lord jesus christ whom we proclaim that your hope may be upon him and you have in him the eternal life that he may be your companion in this land of wandering a haven in this troublous sea and an overflowing fountain in this thirsty land and a house full of food in the place of the hungry and rest for your souls and also a physician of the bodies chapter thirty eight when the multitude of the assembled heard these things they wept and said to the apostle man of god we dare not say that we belong to that god whom thou preachest because our works which we have done are alien from him not pleasing to him but if he has compassion upon us and pities us and delivers us overlooking our former deeds and frees us from the evil which we have done when we were in error and takes not into account nor keeps the recollection of our former sins we shall become his servants and we shall do his will to the end and the apostle answered and said to them he neither condemns you nor does he reckon against you the sins done by you being in error but he overlooks your transgressions which you have done ignorantly end of the third deed of the acts of thomas fourth deed of the acts of thomas from the apocryphal acts of paul peter john andrew and thomas by bernard pick this librivox recording is in the public domain the acts of thomas fourth deed concerning the cult chapter thirty nine whilst the apostle was still standing in the highway and spoke to the multitude a colt of an ass came up to him and opening its mouth said twin brother of the messiah apostle of the most high and initiated into the hidden world of the messiah who receivest his secret utterances co-worker of the son of god who though once free hast been a servant and being sold hast brought many to freedom kinsmen of the great race which condemns the enemy and redeemed its property from him who to many in the land of the indians didst become a cause of life because thou camest to erring men and through thy appearance and thy divine words they now turn to the god of truth who hast sent thee mount sit on me and rest till thou comest to the city and the apostle began and said o jesus christ son of the perfect mercy o rest and calmness and thou of whom even the unreasonable animals speak o hidden rest o thou who art manifest by the working as our saviour and nourisher 
who keepest us and makest us rest on strange bodies saviour of our souls sweet and inexhaustible source firm pure fountain which is never troubled helper and succour of the servants in the struggle who keepest and drivest away from us the enemy who battlest for us in many battles and makest us victorious in all our true and invincible athlete our holy and victorious general most glorious who givest to thy people imperishable joy and rest which knows of no affliction good shepherd who didst offer thyself for thy sheep didst overcome the wolf and hast redeemed thy sheep and led them to good pastures we praise and glorify thee and thy invisible father and thy holy spirit the mother of all creatures chapter forty when the apostle said this the whole multitude looked at him waiting to hear what he would answer the colt and after the apostle remained silent for a time like one being beside himself and looking toward heaven he said to the colt who art thou and whose art thou for surprising and strange is it which was spoken by thee which is also hidden to many and the colt answered and said i am of that family which served belaam and to which also belonged that colt on which sat thy lord and thy master and now i have been sent to give thee rest by thy sitting on me that these may believe and i obtain that portion which i am about to receive by the service now offered to thee and which shall be taken from me if i do not serve thee and the apostle answered he who gave thee this gift of speech can do that it can be given to thee and to those belonging to thy race unto the end for as concerns this mystery i am powerless and weak and he would not mount but the colt entreated him that by riding on it he might bless it and the apostle mounted and sat down and all went with him some going before others following him and they all ran anxious to see how he would dismiss the colt chapter forty one and when he came near the gates of the city he alighted and said go and be kept where thou hast been and immediately the colt fell to the ground and to the feet of the apostle and died all of those that were present were sorrowing and said to the apostle make it alive but he answered and said to them i could do it indeed through the name of jesus but this would not help it for he who gave it the speech that it spoke could also do it that it did not die i shall not raise it not as if i could not do it but because this is the best for it and he ordered those present to dig a hole and bury the carcass and they did as he bade them end of the fourth deed of the acts of thomas fifth deed of the acts of thomas from the apocryphal acts of paul peter john andrew and thomas by bernard pick this librivox recording is in the public domain the acts of thomas fifth deed about the demon that dwelt in the woman chapter forty two and the apostle went into the city followed by all the multitude and he thought of going to the parents of the young man whom he had revived after having been killed by the dragon for they entreated him very much to come and to abide in their house suddenly an exceedingly beautiful woman cried out apostle of the new god who hast come to india and servant of that holy and good god for by thee 
he is proclaimed the savior of the souls of those which come to him and by thee the bodies of those are healed which are punished by the enemy and thou hast become the cause of life for all which turn to him command that i be brought to thee that i may tell thee what happened to me and perhaps there may be hope to me and to those who stand by me to be more confirmed in the faith in that god whom thou preachest for not a little have i already been tormented by the enemy for five years as a woman i formerly had rest surrounded everywhere by peace and i cared for nothing for i had none to care for chapter forty three and one day when i left the bath it happened that i met a man who looked troubled and disturbed and his voice and answer seemed to be very weak and thin and coming up to me he said let us unite in love and have intercourse with each other as a man with his wife and i answered and said i had no intercourse with my betrothed as i refused to be married how should i give myself up to thee that wishest to have intercourse with me as in adultery and having said this i passed by and to my maid i said didst thou see the young man and his impudence how shamelessly and boldly he talked to me and she said i saw an old man talking with thee when i had come to my house and had supped my mind suggested to me some suspicion especially as he appeared to me in two forms and with this in my thoughts i fell asleep in that night he came in to me and made me share in his filthy intercourse i saw him also when it was day and fled from him according to his want he came at night and abused me and now as thou seest me i have been tormented by him five years and he has not departed from me but i know and am persuaded that even demons and spirits and monsters are subject to thee and tremble at thy prayer pray then for me and drive away from me the demon that torments me continually that i also may become free and may be brought to my own kind and receive the gift which has been granted by my kindred chapter forty four and the apostle said o oh, irrepressible wickedness o oh, shamelessness of the enemy o oh, jealous one that is never at rest o oh, ugly one who subjects the beautiful ones o oh, many-formed one he appears as he wishes but his nature cannot be changed o oh, crafty and perfidious o oh, bitter tree whose fruits are like it o oh, traducer fighting over that which is not his o deceit which uses impudence o wickedness that creeps like a serpent and is related to it and when the apostle had thus spoken the fiend stood before him no one seeing him but the apostle and the woman and said in the hearing of all with a very loud voice chapter forty five what have we to do with thee apostle of the most high what have we to do with thee servant of jesus christ what have we to do with thee counselor of the holy son of god why wilt thou destroy us before our time why wilt thou take our power for until the present hour we had hope and time left us what have we to do with thee thou art powerful in thine own and we in our own why wilt thou use tyranny against us since thou teachest others not to use violence why dost thou covet that which is not thine own like one who is not satisfied with what he has why dost thou liken thyself to the son of god who wronged us 
for thou art like him altogether, as if thou hadst him for a father. For we thought to bring him also under the yoke like the rest. But he turned not, and left us under his power, because we knew him not. He deceived us by his very homely form, and his poverty and want. For when we thus saw him, we thought him to be a man clothed with flesh, not knowing that it was he who makes men live. And he gave us power over our own, and for the time being not to give up our own, but to abide in it. But thou wishest to get more than is necessary, and has been given thee to do violence to us. Chapter 46 And having thus spoken, the demon wept, and said, I leave thee, my most beautiful consort, which I found long ago, and was at rest. I leave thee, my beloved, trusty sister, in which I was well pleased. What I shall do, or whom I shall call upon to hear me and protect me, I know not. I know what I shall do. I shall go to the places where the fame of this man has not been heard, and in thy stead, my beloved, I may perhaps find one with another name. And, lifting up his voice, he said, Remain in peace, who has taken refuge with him that is greater than I. I will go away, and seek one like thee, and if I find her not, I shall return again to thee. For I know that when thou art near this man, thou hast a place of refuge in him. But when he has gone away, thou shalt be as thou wast before he appeared, and thou wilt forget him. But for me there will be again opportunity and boldness. But now I fear the name of him who has protected thee. And having thus spoken, the demon disappeared. And after he had gone, fire and smoke were seen, and all present were struck with amazement. Chapter 47 And the apostle, seeing this, said to them, Nothing strange or unusual has the demon shown, but the element by which he shall be burned. For the fire shall consume him, and its smoke shall be scattered abroad. And he began to say, Jesus, hidden mystery which has been revealed unto us, thou art he who didst make known to us many secrets, who hast separated me from all my companions, and told me three words with which I am set on fire, but which I cannot communicate to others. Jesus, man, slain, dead, buried. Jesus, God of God and Savior, who quickeneth the dead and heals the sick. Jesus, who appearest to be in want, and savest as if in want of nothing catching the fishes for the morning and evening meal, and satisfying all with a little bread. Jesus, who rests from the toil of the journey like a man, and walkest upon the waves as God. Jesus, Most High, voice arising from perfect compassion, Savior of all, right hand of the light, prostrating the wicked through his own kind, and bringing all his kind into one place. Polymorphus, who art the only begotten, the firstborn among many brethren, God of God most high and man, despised until now. Jesus Christ, who overlookest us not when we call upon thee, who hast become the cause of life to the whole human race who wast judged for our sakes, and kept in prison, whereas thou freest all that are in bonds, who wast called a deceiver, whereas thou deliverest thine own from deception. I pray thee for these present, and who believe on thee. They wish to obtain thy gifts, having a joyous hope in thy help, and taking refuge in thy majesty their ears are opened to hear the words which are spoken to them 
may thy peace come and dwell in them and renew them by cleansing them from their former deeds and let them put off the old man with his deeds and put on the new man now declared to them by me chapter forty nine and he laid his hands on them and blessed them saying the grace of our lord jesus be upon you for ever and they said amen and the woman begged of him and said apostle of the most high give me the seal that that foe may not come back upon me again and he made her come near to him laid his hands on her and sealed her in the name of the father and of the son and of the holy ghost and many others were also sealed with her and the apostle ordered his minister to set out a table and they set out a couch which they found there and having spread a linen cloth upon it he put on it the bread of the blessing and the apostle standing by it said jesus who hast deemed us worthy to partake of the eucharist of thy holy body and blood see we are emboldened to come to thy eucharist and to invoke thy holy name come and commune with us chapter fifty and he commenced to say come gift of the most high come perfect compassion come communion with the male come holy spirit come thou that knowest the mysteries of the chosen one come thou that communicatest in all the combats of the noble combatant come treasury of glory come most beloved of the mercy of the most high come rest that makest manifest the great deeds of the whole greatness come thou that disclosest secrets and makest manifest the mysteries come holy dove which hast brought forth twin young come thou secret mother come thou who art manifest by thy deeds come thou giver of joy and of rest to those who are united to thee come and commune with us in this eucharist which we make in thy name and in the love feast for which we are united at thy calling and having thus spoken he made the sign of the cross upon the bread and broke it and began to distribute it and first he gave it to the woman and said this shall be to thee for remission of sins and everlasting transgressions and after her he gave also to all the others who had received the seal end of the fifth deed from the acts of thomas sixth deed of the acts of thomas from the apocryphal acts of paul peter john andrew and thomas by bernard pick this LibriVox recording is in the public domain. Sixth Deed Concerning the Young Man Who Killed the Maiden Chapter 51 And there was a certain young man who had done a nefarious deed, and he also came and partook of the Eucharist. And his two hands withered, so that he could no longer bring them to his mouth. When those present saw him, they told the apostle what had happened and the apostle called him and said tell me my son and be not afraid what thou hast done ere thou camest hither for the eucharist of the lord has convicted thee of a bad deed for this gift by permeating them brings healing to many especially to those who come in faith and love but thee it has withered away and what has happened has happened not without some cause on thy part 
and the young man convicted by the eucharist of the lord came up fell to the apostle's feet and prayed him and said an evil deed has been done by me whilst i thought to do something nice i loved a woman who lived in an inn outside of the city and she loved me also and i having heard from thee and believing that thou proclaimest the living god came and received the seal from thee along with the others and thou didst say whoever shall indulge in impure intercourse with a woman especially in adultery shall not have life with the god whom i preach as i loved her very much i entreated her and tried to persuade her to live with me in chaste and pure intercourse as thou thyself teachest and she would not since she would not i took a sword and killed her for i could not see her living in adultery with another chapter fifty two when the apostle heard this he said o maddening intercourse how leadest thou to impudences o unrestrained lust how hast thou excited this one to do this o work of the serpent how art thou uplifted in thine own and the apostle ordered some water to be brought in a dish and when the water had been brought he said come waters from the living waters everlasting sent to us from the everlasting rest sent to us from the rest power of salvation proceeding from that power which overcomes all and subjects it to its will come and dwell in these waters that the gift of the holy spirit may be fully communicated to them and to the young man he said go wash thy hands in these waters and having washed them they were restored and the apostle said to him believest thou on our lord jesus christ that he can do all things and he said though i am very weak yet i believe but i did this in the hope of doing something good for i entreated her as i told thee already but she would not be persuaded by me to keep herself chaste chapter fifty three and the apostle said to him come let us go to the inn where thou didst the work and let us see what happened and the young man went before the apostle on the road when they had come to the inn they found her lying and when the apostle saw her he was sad for she was a beautiful maiden and he ordered her to be brought into the middle of the inn and having put her on a couch they brought it and set it in the midst of the courtyard of the inn and the apostle laid his hand on her and began to say jesus who always appearest to us for this thou wishest that we should always seek thee and hast given us the permission to ask for us and to receive and hast not only permitted us this but hast also taught us how to pray who art not seen by us with the bodily eyes but who art not altogether hidden from those of our soul and who art hidden in thy form but manifested to us by thy works and by thy many deeds we have recognized thee as much as we comprehend and thou hast given us thy gifts without measure saying ask and it shall be given you seek and ye shall find knock and it shall be opened unto you we pray therefore being afraid of our sins and we ask of thee not riches nor gold nor silver nor possessions nor any of those things that come from earth and go into the earth again but we beg of thee 
and entreat that in thy holy name thou raise this woman lying here by thy power to thy glory and to an awakening of faith in those which stand by chapter fifty four and he said to the young man having marked him with the sign of the cross go and take her hand and say to her through iron i killed thee with my hands and with my hands i raise thee because of faith in jesus and the young man went and stood by her saying i have believed in thee o christ jesus and looking upon judas thomas the apostle he said to him pray for me that my lord upon whom i call may come to my help and having laid his hand on her hand he said come lord jesus christ give her life and me the earnest of the faith in thee and drawing her by the hand she sprang up and sat looking at the great multitude standing around and she also saw the apostle standing opposite to her and having left her couch she sprang up and fell at his feet and took hold of his garments saying i pray thee lord where is thy companion who has not left me to remain in that fearful and grievous place but has given me up to thee saying take this one that she may be made perfect and thereafter be brought into her own place chapter fifty five and the apostle said to her tell us where thou hast been and she answered dost thou who wast with me to whom also i was entrusted wish to hear and she commenced thus an ugly-looking man all black received me and his dress was exceedingly filthy and he took me to a place where there were many chasms and a great stench and most hateful odor were given forth thence and he made me look into each chasm and i saw in the chasm blazing fire and fiery wheels run there and souls were hung up upon these wheels dashing against each other and there was crying and great lamentation and no saviour was there and that man said to me these souls are akin to thee and in the days of numbering they were given over to punishment and destruction and then when the torture of each is completed others are brought in their places in like manner all these are again succeeded by others they are they who have exchanged the intercourse of man and wife and again i looked down and saw infants newly born heaped upon each other and struggling and lying upon each other and he said to me these are their children and for this they are placed here for a testimony against them chapter fifty six and he brought me to another chasm and as i looked into it i saw mud and worms spouting forth and souls wallowing there and i heard a great gnashing of teeth thence from them and that man said to me these are the souls of women which left their husbands and of husbands which left their wives and committed adultery with others and which have been brought to this torment and he showed me another chasm and looking into it i saw souls hung up some by the tongue some by the hair some by the hands others by the feet head downward and smoked with smoke and sulphur concerning these the man which accompanied me said the following the souls hung up by the tongue are slanderers and such as have spoken false and disgraceful words and are not ashamed of it those hung up by their hair are the shameless who are not ashamed at all 
and go about with uncovered heads in the world those hung up by the hands are they which took that which did not belong to them and have stolen and who never gave anything to the poor voluntarily nor did they help the afflicted but they so acted because they wished to get everything and cared neither for law nor right and these hung up by the feet are those who lightly and eagerly walked in wicked ways and disorderly paths not visiting the sick neither burying those who departed this life on this account each soul receives what it has done chapter fifty seven and again he led me forth and showed me a very dark cavern exhaling a very bad odor many souls were peeping out thence wishing to get some share of the air and their keepers would not let them peep out and my companion said to me this is the prison of these souls which thou hast seen for when they have fully received their punishment for that which each has done others succeed them some are fully eaten up others are given up to other punishments and the keepers of the souls in the dark cavern said to the man that had charge of me give her to us that we bring her to the others till the time comes when she is given up to punishment but he said to them i will not give her to you because i am afraid of him who gave her up to me for i was not told to leave her here i shall take her up with me till i get an injunction about her and he took me and brought me to another place where there were men who were bitterly tortured he that is like thee took me and gave me up to thee saying to thee take her for she is one of the sheep which have wandered away and thou didst take me and thus i now stand before thee i beg therefore and supplicate thee that i may not come to those places of punishment which i have seen chapter fifty eight and the apostle said you have heard what this woman has recounted and these are not the only punishments but there are others worse than these and you too unless you turn to the god whom i preach and abstain from your former works and the deeds which you did ignorantly shall find your end in these punishments believe therefore in christ jesus and he will forgive you the former sins and will cleanse you from all your bodily desires that abide in the earth and will heal you from the faults that follow after you and go along with you and are found before you let every one of you put off the old man and put on the new and leave your former course of conduct and behavior those that steal let them steal no more but let them live laboring and working the adulterers are no more to commit adultery lest they give themselves up to everlasting punishment for adultery is with god an evil altogether grievous above all other evils put away also from yourselves covetousness and lying and drunkenness and slandering and rendering evil for evil for all these are alien and strange to the god whom i preach but walk ye rather in faith and meekness and holiness and hope in which god rejoices that you may become of his household expecting from him those gifts which a few only receive chapter fifty nine the whole people therefore believed and presented obedient souls to the living god and jesus the messiah enjoying the blessed works of the most high and his holy service and they brought money for the service of the widows for he had them collected in the cities 
and he sent to all of them by his servants the things necessary both clothing as well as food he himself ceased not to preach and to speak to them and to show that this jesus is the messiah of whom the scriptures have spoken that he should be crucified after his appearance and should be raised after three days from the dead he also showed to them explaining and beginning from the prophets what was said concerning the messiah that it was necessary for him to come and that everything had to be accomplished what was spoken of him beforehand and the fame of him spread over all the cities and villages and all who had sick persons or such as were troubled by unclean spirits brought them to him and some they laid on the road by which he was to pass and he healed all by the power of the lord and those that were healed by him said with one accord and one voice glory to thee jesus who in like manner hast given healing to all through thy servant and apostle thomas and being in good health and rejoicing we pray thee that we may become members of thy flock and be counted among thy sheep receive us therefore o lord and consider not our trespasses and our former transgressions which we have done because we were in ignorance chapter sixty and the apostle said glory be to the only begotten of the father glory to the firstborn of many brethren glory to thee the helper and succor of those who take their refuge to thee thou that sleepest not and raising those that are asleep that livest and bringest to life those that are lying in death o god jesus christ son of the living god redeemer and helper refuge and rest of all those that labor in thy work who affordest health to those who for thy name's sake bear the burden and heat of the day we give thanks for the gifts given to us by thee and for the help from thee bestowed upon us and thy providential care that has come upon us from thee chapter sixty one perfect these things upon us therefore unto the end that we may have confidence in thee look upon us and see because for thy sake we have left our houses and our patrimony and for thy sake we have gladly and willingly become strangers look upon us o lord and see that for thy sake we have given up our own possession that we might obtain thee for a possession that shall not be taken away look upon us o lord because we have left those related to us by ties of kindred in order that we may be united in relationship to thee look upon us o lord who have left our fathers and mothers and providers that we behold thy father and be satisfied with his divine nourishment look upon us o lord because for thy sake we left our bodily wives and our earthly fruit in order that we may share in that true and lasting communion and bring forth true fruits whose nature is from above which no one can take from us in which we abide and they abide with us end of the sixth deed of the acts of thomas seventh deed of the acts of thomas from the apocryphal acts of paul peter john andrew and thomas by bernard pick this librivox recording is in the public domain seventh deed concerning the commander chapter sixty two when the apostle judas thomas was preaching in india the word of god a commander of king misdai came to him and said to him 
i have heard of thee that thou dost receive no reward but givest to the poor what thou hast for if thou wouldest receive a reward i should have sent thee a sufficient sum of money and i had not come myself since the king does nothing without me for my possession is great and i am rich one of the wealthy in india but i never did anything wrong to any one but the reverse i have experienced i have a wife and i had a daughter by her and i love her very much as nature demands it and i had no intercourse with another woman and it happened that there was a wedding in our city and those which made the wedding were good friends of mine so they came and asked me my consent by inviting my wife and daughter being well befriended i could not refuse it so i sent her though she did not care and i sent also many slaves with them so they went away decked with much jewelry she and her daughter chapter sixty three and when it was evening and the time had come to come home from the wedding i sent lamps and torches for to meet them and i stood by looking out when they came and i could see her and my daughter and as i stood i heard a lamentation woe to her was heard from every mouth and the slaves returned with torn garments and told me what had happened we saw said they a man and a boy with him the man had his hand upon thy wife and boy upon thy daughter but they ran away from them and we wounded them with swords but the swords fell to the ground and the women also gnashing with their teeth and knocking their heads against the ground and when we saw this we came to tell thee upon hearing this i tore my garment and struck my face with my hands and ran all the way like mad and having gone away i found them prostrated in the market and i took them and brought them into my house and having regained their senses after a while they rose and sat down chapter sixty four i now began to ask my wife what is it that that happened to thee and she said dost thou not perceive what happened to me for i asked of thee not to let me go to the wedding since i did not feel very well and as i walked by the way and came to the aqueduct i saw a black man before me and his head shaking a little to me and a boy like him standing by his side and i said to my daughter look at these two ugly-looking men whose teeth are like milk and whose lips are like soot and we left them at the aqueduct and went on after sunset having broken off from the wedding and gone with the slaves through the city and when near the aqueduct my daughter noticed them first and she came to me and after her i saw them also coming towards us and we ran away from them and the slaves also which were with us ran away and they beat us and threw us down and as she told me this the demons came near again and threw her down and since that hour they can go out no more being locked up in one or in another house and on their account i suffer much and am troubled for wherever they are they throw them down and uncover them i ask thee therefore to pray to god help me and have mercy upon me for since three years no table for the meal has been set up in my house and my wife and my daughter sat at no meal especially i ask thee for my unhappy daughter which has not seen anything good yet in this world chapter sixty five when the apostle heard this from the commander he felt very sorry for him and he said to him believest thou that jesus heals her and the commander said yes and the apostle said commend thyself to jesus and he will heal and help her 
said the commander show him to me that i may ask him and believe on him and the apostle said he appears not to these bodily eyes but is only found with the eyes of the mind and the commander lifted up his voice and said i believe on thee jesus and i beseech and ask of thee help my little faith which i have toward thee the apostle commanded the deacon xenophon to assemble all in one place and when the multitude was assembled the apostle spoke standing in the midst chapter sixty six my children and brethren which believe on the lord remain in this faith by preaching jesus who has been preached to you by me and by putting your hope in him forsake him not and he shall not forsake you when you sleep in this sleep weighing down the sleepers he sleeps not and watches and when you travel by sea and are in danger and there is none to help he walks upon the waters and helps i am now about to go from you and it is uncertain whether i shall see you again in my body be not like the people of israel which fell when left alone for a short time by its shepherd i leave with you in my place deacon xenophon for he also preaches jesus like myself for neither am i something nor he but jesus for i also am a man clothed with a body a son of man like one of you i have also no riches as some which convince also the possessors of their entire uselessness since they are left behind on earth whence it came but the trespasses which men take upon themselves on their account and the filth of sin they take with them the rich are seldom found in the practice of mercy but the merciful and the meek of heart they shall inherit the kingdom of god even beauty remains not with man for they which rely upon it when old age comes shall suddenly be confounded everything has its time there is a time to love a time to hate let the hope therefore be on jesus christ the son of god who is always loved and desired and remember us as we remember you for we also thomas and xenophon unless we carry the burden of the commandments we are not worthy to be preachers of that name and shall be punished there afterward chapter sixty seven and having prayed with them and remained a long time in prayer and supplication he commended them to the lord and said lord the lord of each soul which dwelleth in a body lord father of the souls which hope in thee and wait for thy mercy who redeemeth thy men from error and freest from servitude and corruption those who are subject to thee and take refuge with thee come to the fold of xenophon anoint them with holy oil heal their wounds and keep them from the grievous wolves and he laid his hands upon them and said the peace of the lord come upon you and go also with us end of the seventh deed of the acts of thomas eighth deed of the acts of thomas from the apocryphal acts of paul peter john andrew and thomas by bernard pick this librivox recording is in the public domain the acts of thomas eighth deed about the wild asses chapter sixty eight and the apostle went forth to go on his way and all accompanied him with tears and adjured him to remember them in his prayers and not to forget them and when he had mounted the wagon and all brethren were left behind 
the commander came ordered the driver to rise and said i pray and supplicate to be deemed worthy to sit under his feet and to become his driver on this way that he may become my companion on that way in which only a few walk chapter sixty nine and having gone about two miles the apostle bade the commander to rise and sit beside him allowing the driver to take his own seat and as they went on it happened that on account of the great heat the beasts of burden became tired and could move no more and the commander became very sad and discouraged and thought of running by foot to fetch other beasts of burden for the wagon but the apostle said let not your heart be troubled neither let it be afraid but believe on jesus christ whom i have preached to thee and thou shalt see great wonders and looking about he saw a herd of wild asses grazing by the way and he said to the commander if thou believest on jesus christ go to the herd of wild asses and say judas thomas the apostle of the messiah of the new god saith let four of you come because we need you chapter seventy and the commander went seized by fear because there were so many and as he went they came to meet him and having come near he said to them judas thomas the apostle of the new god commands you that four of you should come because i need them and the wild asses upon hearing this came to him running with one accord and having come they fell upon their knees and the apostle said to them peace be with you yoke four in place of these beasts of burden put aside and every one of them came and crowded to be yoked and there were four stronger than the rest and these were yoked of the others some went before some followed and having gone a short distance he dismissed them saying to you the inhabitants of the desert i say go to your pastures for if i needed all you would all go with me but now go to your place where you were and they quietly went away till they disappeared chapter seventy one while the apostle the commander and the driver went on the wild asses walked quietly and evenly in order not to disquiet the apostle of god and when they had come near the gate of the city they turned aside and stopped before the house of the commander and the commander said it is not possible to tell what happened but i will await the end and then i will speak and the whole city came having seen the wild asses yoked and the fame also spread that the apostle intended to remain here the apostle asked the commander where is thy dwelling and whither art thou bringing us and he said to him thou knowest thyself that we are at the door and these which had come along at thy behest know it better than myself chapter seventy two having said this they alighted from the wagon and the apostle began to say jesus christ whose knowledge is despised in this country jesus christ of whom nothing has been heard in this country jesus who receivest all apostles in every country and every city and by whom all worthy of thee are glorified jesus who has taken thee a form and becamest like a man and didst appear to all of us in order not to separate us from thy love lord thou art he who hast given himself for us and hast bought us with a price by his blood as a precious possession 
but what have we lord to offer in exchange for thy life which thou hast given for us for what we have is thy gift and thou demandest also nothing of us than this that we ask thee and thereby have life chapter seventy three and having spoken thus many came from all sides to see the apostle of the new god and the apostle said again why do we stand idle lord jesus the hour has come what wishest thou that should be done command therefore that this be accomplished what must be done now and the wife and daughter of the commander were very troubled by the demons in such a wise that the inmates of the house thought that they would rise no more for they would not allow them to eat anything at all but threw them on their beds and they recognized no one till the day on which the apostle came the apostle said to one of the wild asses which were yoked on his right side go into the court and there standing call the demons and say unto them judas thomas the apostle and disciple of jesus christ says come out hither for your sakes and against your relatives have i been sent to destroy you and to persecute you to your place till the time of consummation comes and you go down into your dark depth chapter seventy four the wild ass accompanied by many people went in and said i say to you the enemies of jesus christ i say to you which close the eyes not to see the light since the worst nature cannot be changed for good to you i say the children of hell and destruction the children of him who unceasingly does evil who always renews his operations and that which becometh his nature to you i say most impudent who shall be destroyed by yourselves but what i should say concerning your destruction and end and what i should advise i know not for it is much and immense to hear it but your trespasses are greater than the punishment which is reserved for you but to thee demon and thy son which follows thee i say for now i have been sent for your sakes but why make many words about your nature and origin which you know yourselves and are nevertheless impudent judas thomas the apostle of jesus the messiah who has been sent hither out of much love and kindness commands you go out in the presence of all the people here and tell me of what family you are chapter seventy five and immediately the woman and her daughter came forth like dead and dishonored and when the apostle saw them he was sad especially on account of the girl and said to the demons let no forgiveness and forbearance fall to your lot for you also know no forbearance or compassion but in the name of jesus leave them and go aside when the apostle had said this the women fell down and died for they had neither breath nor did they speak and the demon began and said with a loud voice hast thou come hither again mocker of our nature and kindred hast thou come again to deface our tracks and as i think you will not suffer us at all to remain upon earth but this you cannot do at this time the apostle however supposed that this demon was the same which was driven out from that woman chapter seventy six and the demon said i beseech thee suffer me to go and to dwell where thou wishest and command me for that purpose then i shall not fear him who has power over me 
for as thou hast come to preach, so have I come to destroy. As he who sent thee punishes thee for not fulfilling his will, so, unless I do the will of him who has sent me, I am sent before the time and appointed season into my nature, exist no more as an individual. And as the Messiah helps thee in thy work, so helps me my Father in what I do. And as he prepares for thee the vessels, worthy that he dwell in them, so selects my Father vessels, by which I accomplish his deeds. And as he nourishes and provides his subjects, thus my Father prepares for me and those in which I dwell punishments and torments. And as he gives thee eternal life as rewards for thy work, so my Father offers me as recompense for my works everlasting destruction. And as thou enjoyest thy prayer and good works and thy spiritual hymns, thus I enjoy murders and adulteries and the wine offerings offered upon the altars. And as thou turnest men over to everlasting life, I turn those which obey me to everlasting damnation and punishment. Thou receivest thy reward, I mine. Chapter 77 The demon, having spoken this and the more, the apostle said, Jesus commands thee and thy son through me, that you no more enter into a human dwelling, but go out and go and dwell altogether outside of the dwelling of men. And the demons said to him, Thou hast given us a hard order, but what wilt thou do to those which are now hidden from thee? For the makers of idols enjoy them more than thou, and the multitude worships them and does their will, bringing offerings to them, and offering wine and water libations as food, and presenting gifts. And the apostle said, They shall now be destroyed with their deeds. And suddenly the demons became invisible. But the women did lie like dead upon the ground, having no voice. Chapter 78 And the wild asses stood together and separated not. But the wild ass, which, by the power of God, was able to speak, said to the apostle, whilst all were silent, and looked on what they would do, Why standest thou idle, apostle of the Most High, who waits that thou beseech him for the greatest knowledge? What dost thou delay? For thy teacher wishes to show his great deeds by thy hands. What standest thou, herald of the hidden one? For thy master will make known through thee the secret, reserving it for those whom he deems worthy to hear it. What resist thou, who performs great deeds in the name of the Lord? For thy Lord encourages thee by giving thee courage. Be not afraid, therefore, for he will forsake no soul which, according to kindred, belongs to thee. Begin, therefore, to call upon him, and he shall willingly hear thee. What standest thou, and admirest all his deeds and effects? For these things are small which he has shown by thee. And what wilt thou say of his great gift? for thou shalt not be able to tell them fully. What dost thou wonder at his bodily healings, which pass, especially as thou knowest the true and lasting healing which he gives to those who belong to him? And why dost thou look at this temporal life, and thinkest not of the eternal? Chapter 79 and to you, multitudes, standing here, and waiting that the prostrated women shall be raised, I say, Believe the Apostle of Jesus Christ, believe the Teacher of Truth, believe him who shows you the truth, believe on Jesus, believe on the Messiah which was born, that the born have life through his life, 
who also became a child and was educated that the perfect humanity appear through him he taught his own teacher because he is the teacher of truth and the wisest of the wise he offered sacrifice also in the temple to show that every offering is hallowed by him this here is his apostle the revealer of truth it is he who does the will of him who sent him but lying apostles and prophets of lawlessness shall come whose end shall be according to their deeds which indeed preach and give laws that one should flee lawlessness but they are found at all times in sins they are clothed indeed in sheep's clothing but inwardly they are ravening wolves they are not satisfied with one wife but corrupt many women they say that they despise children yet ruin many children and suffer for them they are not satisfied with what they have but wish that everything useful should serve them alone whereas they pretend to be christ's disciples they say one thing with their mouth but in their hearts they think otherwise they command others to refrain from wickedness but themselves they do nothing good they are regarded as temperate and command others to abstain from fornication theft and avarice but in secret they do all these things themselves teaching others not to do these things chapter eighty while the wild ass was thus talking all looked at it and when it was silent the apostle said what am i to think of thy beauty o jesus and what to say about it i know not rather i cannot for i am not able o christ to utter it completely o thou that restest and only one who art wise who alone knowest what is in the heart and the contents of thought glory be to thee merciful and tranquil glory be to thee wise word glory to thy mercy which is shed over us glory to thy compassion which is spread over us glory to thy majesty who didst come down for our sakes glory to thy highest kingdom which humbled itself for our sakes glory to thy strength which became weak for our sakes glory to thy deity which for our sakes appeared in the image of man glory to thy humanity which died for our sakes to make us alive glory to thy resurrection from the dead for by it our souls shall share in the resurrection and rest glory and praise to thy ascension into heaven for by it thou didst show us the way to the highest after thou didst promise that we shall sit on thy right hand and judge with thee the twelve tribes of israel thou art the heavenly word of the father thou art the hidden light of the mind thou art he that shows the way of truth o persecutor of darkness and destroyer of error chapter eighty one when the apostle had spoken thus he went to the women and said my lord and my god i doubt not in thee nor do i call upon thee in unbelief who art always our helper and assistance and restorer who givest us thy strength encourages us and givest thy servants freedom in love i beseech thee let these women rise up healed and become again as they were ere the demons struck them having spoken thus the women turned and sat down and the apostle ordered the commander that his servants take them and bring them in and when they had come in the apostle said to the wild asses follow me 
and they followed him till outside of the gates and having come out he told them go in peace to your pastures and the wild asses went away willingly the apostle standing and seeing to it that no harm be done to them by any one till they had become invisible in the distance and the apostle returned with the people into the house of the commander end of the eighth deed of the acts of thomas